Well, as a fisher, I'm always looking to learn about the habitats that I like to fish in. But I must admit, the one habitat I don't know a whole lot about is this right here, which is salt marsh. I'm gonna go for a bit of a flick along this river here that runs along this salt marsh on the north coast of New South Wales. But before I do so, I'm gonna meet up with a few of the locals and Elsa from Ozfish to tell me how habitat here affects fish in there. Let's go. Salt marshes are an intertidal community of plants that grow on the foreshores of coastal lakes and estuaries. It might not look like much, and it might not be covered in water yet, but this area plays a vital role for fish and the nearby rivers. Right, Elsa, I feel as though I'm walking in a paddock even though the river's right there. Is this, <laughs> is this a salt marsh? That's right, this is salt marsh habitat right here. So when we say that, what we're looking at, Jono, is the ground cover cooch. Right. We've got grasses and sedges and rushes over there, she oaks in the background running into mangrove forests and these species can survive a range of conditions. So you're telling me that salt can come up out of the river and drain this, this salt yep. marsh, fresh water can come out of the west and drain it, plus we can have sun beating down for 30 or 40 days straight and it will be right? That's right, it takes the brunt of it. Right, salt marsh. Hey Jono, have a look at this. What do you got? So these are puddles and this yep. is salt marsh in action. Right. So what we've got here is a week's worth of rain from the land has come to the salt marsh yep. and it's been given the time it deserves to filter out the excess nutrients yep. and break down that vegetative matter to become something that the filter feeders can feed on further downstream. So all that rain we've had has to get through the salt marsh. It's like a buffer zone really before it hits the river. Absolutely. Awesome, let's keep tracking. Salt marsh is that vital link between the land and the river. On king tides, this area will be submerged, which provides a place for juvenile fish to feed and grow, while allowing bigger fish to lay their eggs. As the water then washes off, as does the nutrient-rich soils and crustaceans that inhabit these areas, providing for a natural feeding ground for bigger predators. Why should we care about salt marsh? Well, every living thing in that river behind us is linked or connected in some way to this salt marsh. It was either born here, it was here as a juvenile, it roamed here as a, in their youth to hunt, and it probably laid its eggs here for the next generation in this salt marsh. I'm the CR Jali Local Aboriginal Land Council, Chris Binge. And we've been working in partnership with Ausfish now for quite some time. This salt marsh area that we're standing on has prevalence to us as Aboriginal people. We know that there are a number of midden sites that are close to us where we are now, and there are a number of significant sites in the area as well. We look at the biomass, 90% of it, of the stuff that lives in the water, we can't see. And it's only the 3% at the top of the biomass that we catch and eat. Now to support that 3%, you need that 90% underneath it. And that's what Ozfish does. All right, Jono, see here? Yep. This is what it's all about. You've got, in a metre square, all kinds of invertebrates living in the one area. You've got crab holes, you've got snails, you've got spiders and insects living in this. And this is what the fish are here for. This is what they're looking forward to from the salt marsh. I can already see my lure imitating that little crab <laughs> at 15 yeah. metres away. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, we were asked to do some salt marsh studies. And when I went to the area that I was asked to do, there was no salt marsh, it was all mangroves. Due to rising sea levels, the salt marsh is on retreat. The salt marsh has a very narrow band where it can grow, and it's retreating back up the land. But in Ballina and a lot of other places, it's got nowhere to go, it hits a road. So it dies and you just got mangroves, and that's it. Over the years, of course, people want to build on it. They want to uh, have agriculture and uh, all sorts of human activity, which has taken away a lot of our salt marsh. As Nangamal people and as Aboriginal people, we, we um, definitely believe that you know, working in these areas isn't just about the regeneration of, of, of what we need to continue, but it's also important for us from a cultural perspective, not just for now, but into the future. Salt marshes reside in areas under threat by suburban encroachment, erosion, runoff and pollution, all caused by land-based activities. As stewards of our waterway, one of the most important things we can do to protect our fish 
is to protect our salt marshes. Regular cleanups, fencing off areas, weed control, avoiding walking or driving on salt marshes, and most importantly, getting involved in citizen science rehabilitation programs. Up to 70% of all fish, prawns and crabs we catch in the estuary depend on salt marsh at some point in their life. And really we need volunteers to work on the river. If you're a fisher, let's get stuck into it. Let's all fix the river up so we've got more fish to catch. Down here or over here? Oh, you want to go down here to your left here. To the left? Have you fished here before? Oh yeah, many times. Uh, this is where I caught my PB flathead. 72 centimetres. <laughs> right, so I've got a task ahead of me then. To find out more, head over to ozfish.org.au.